I think they're wide awake now. So, Alan, um, we're talking about what we're doing here today. Now, we do a lot, a lot of school shows, and uh, when we go to school shows, number one is we really need that energy from you. We're here to motivate you, and today we're here for a very, very special month, which is Asian Heritage Month. That's right. Now, we live in Canada, and we always talk about there is uh, Black History Month, Asian Heritage Month. It's to celebrate what? What's that really, really important word that we talk about that we celebrate? No, not, not New Year's. What was New Year's, Alan? New, New Year's was January 1st, there was a New Year, and then Chinese New Year, who knows when Chinese New Year's was? February 8th. That's right, it was actually February 11th this year, I think, right? But we were celebrating for a whole two weeks at that time. But right now, the really important thing that we're celebrating is culture. And what's culture, Ellen? Now, culture is really like a big word. You know, we all have a different culture that we come from. We all have a different country that we come from. But we're all unified by Canadian culture. Now, a lot of people, I remember when I was in school, learning about culture, we're like, okay, you know, India, they have a culture, China, they have a culture, Africa, they have a culture. What's Canadian culture? Well, I think Canadian culture is really a mixture uh, of all of our races, all of the countries we come from. Do you guys know what country you come from? Yeah, know what country you, you, you and your parents come from. <laughs> a really long country. <laughs> now, and that's great, so we're going to celebrate the Asian heritage, or in, in particular the Chinese heritage, where Alan and I are from, and uh, there's a very a few very special things that are precious to us in our culture, okay? Now, what are some of those things? Well, when we celebrate culture, it's really we're sharing, right? All of the unique things that we've learned in the past, and, like you said, in Canada, are we the only ones celebrating Chinese culture now? No! Do you guys like Chinese food? Yeah. Yeah. Food is a big part of culture. And then, of course, Alan, do you guys, have you ever heard of Jackie Chan? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Alan and myself were both stuntmen as well, and we do different movies, and I think there's a really in particular movie that you guys probably love, Kung Fu Panda, right? Yeah! And that in itself, through entertainment, through arts, sports, that is a celebration of culture as well. And we were saying, right, Alan? What are the different things that we do? Now, when we talk about arts and entertainment, we have movies, Dancing, what else? Dance. Music is a big part of culture, right? We talk about food, there's all different foods that we eat that's a big part of culture. Holidays, we like, the more cultures the better, right, Alan? Right, more holidays. Yes, we have a lot of holidays, and there's one in particular thing that we do for physical activity, and what, what is that, Alan? Uh, is it, is it, uh, style? <laughs> No, no, Alan. We're, we're much more serious than that. We, we train in a very particular art that requires actually a lot of discipline. Can you guys say discipline? That's right. And through that, we as well learn a lot of respect. Can you guys say respect? And you know what the most important thing we learn through that art is? Personal excellence. Everybody say personal excellence. That's right, because we're trying to achieve, in our art form, our personal best. That doesn't mean we have to be better than other people, or anything like that. We're trying to be our best to train ourselves physically, right? So that we can do different types of movements and different things. What do we do, Alan? Now, do you see what looks a little confused? They, they still don't know. I heard someone uh, do uh, say it earlier. I'll give you a hint. Blank Panda. These guys got it. Now, Kung Fu, a lot of people know, is a Chinese martial art, and they think it's all about, yeah! But, but actually, Kung Fu in Chinese, 
doesn't mean martial arts. Kung Fu in Chinese actually means hard work. Okay? And the reason why people, people call martial arts Kung Fu is that way, way back in ancient China, okay, the people who practiced Kung Fu, they would work so hard every day in the field, practicing every day for hours, and people say, oh, they have good Kung Fu. But as a student, you can have good Kung Fu. You guys work hard? Good Kung Fu. Your teachers, I'm sure they work really, really hard. They have good Kung Fu. Your parents, you can be a chef. You could be a rocket scientist, you know, you just have, if you have good Kung Fu, if you work hard, then you have good Kung Fu. The actual term for martial arts in Chinese, anyone know it? Oh, nobody actually knows it. Do you know? Yes, that's the English word. But what is the Chinese term for it? I'll teach it to you right now. It is Wu Shu. Can you guys say Wu Shu? Perfect. Now, it's not just a very tasty type of chicken. You guys ever ordered wuxu chicken? No. I'm kidding. <laughs> it, is, it is China's national sport. And uh, Alan, we're very lucky. He is actually the Canadian coach of the Chinese wuxu team, of the Canadian wuxu team for all of Canada. He coaches all these athletes, aren't you, Alan? That's right. And in coaching or teaching, a lot of youngsters just like yourselves, we're teaching you how to move, how to be agile, how to be coordinated and balanced. And today we have a very, uh, several guests. That's right. And our guests here are going to be here to perform. And we have several of our national champions that work very, very hard. We have several of our coaches here today. And, you know, what, what do we do in Wushu? What, what types of movements do we learn? Well, I think uh, the song, no. Everybody wants Kung Fu Fighting. I think that demonstrates though. I'm kidding. All joking aside, we do some very difficult, difficult movements. And actually, what you're going to see soon, we're going to give you guys a demo. Uh, I ask you, don't try it at home, or don't try it in the schoolyard, because it's very dangerous. You can hurt yourself. You want to learn from a uh, Sifu, which is Chinese for teacher, a teacher that knows what they're doing. So we have very important elements like flexibility. We have some demonstrations of flexibility. And here, give a hand for Andrew. This is one of our uh, talented athletes here. How, how do we stretch? What, 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 what's something we do to show flexibility? Wow. Blitz. Very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. That takes a lot of training just to do that. Uh, what else? But you know what else is important is when we say balance. And I think Alan, you're really good at that. You guys want to see Alan show us how he balances? Yeah! Come on, Alan. So there's balance and we talk about training for strength, training for coordination, agility, speed, and a lot of teamwork is involved. With any sport, we have teamwork. And we, we often train in teams. Coach Chen was actually a national champion from China 
who has now uh, come to Canada and is helping with the development of our team. But you know what? Like I said, Alan, we're going to show them some wushu. How about that? Jumping kick. 
by putting on an athletic and training. Oh, a cartwheel, you learn an aerial, a no-handed cartwheel. Jumping is that game. Spinning, jumping, and kicking is very difficult. Landing in the split. That is really painful. Now, you'll notice there's a lot of balance, stability, a lot of low stances involved. That requires a lot, a lot of training to get to that level. Demonstrating now the very high level score, which involves a lot of high jump kicks, low stances, and acrobatics. We're getting into some weapons training now. Now, a lot of people think weapons, oh, they're lethal, they're dangerous, but when you're learning martial arts, and especially in Wushu, we don't call them weapons, we call them apparatus, okay? And basically, when you learn such a high level Wushu, you have good control of your arms and your feet, you bring in a weapon. Now, we learn to use that weapon or that apparatus. In this case, it's a bow staff, as clearly as controlled as you would have over your own hand. So really, it's not like using something that's not a part of you. You're making that staff a part of your own body. This is one of the intermediate forms uh, Coach Robert is demonstrating to you right now. All right. Before the weapons, we're getting to do learn some advanced form, another advanced form that Andrea is demonstrating right now. A lot of fast, short movement. Okay. Hmm. I don't want to meet her in a dark alley. <laughs> We're going to the staff right now. We're going to the basics of the staff. One is spinning it in a straight line around the body without hitting yourself. It's very, very hard to do. Learning basic thrusting, position to the staff, having good control and balance to the staff is very important. Let's your coach can demonstrate a straight sword. Again, with a straight sword, both edges of the sword are very sharp. So you have to be in complete control. Otherwise, you can cut your own finger off. It can be very dangerous. So he learns the balance, very quick slow movement, with jump, spin, very difficult to do.
Give us a couple of chats. That was amazing. I'm going to ask you a bigger broad sword. And this is this sword difficult than it's one edge. It's really sharp. Now these are our real, real swords. These are practice swords. And you'll notice it's a little bit kind of bendy. Just a little bit. But what happens is it requires a lot of power. When you get a sound, he's putting a lot of power into it. And it shows just how strong movements you can make. Wow. He's really strong. Give it up for Asia, that was crazy. Oh, no. In addition to just practice forms by yourself, we interact with each other, right? Learning very self-defense movements to protect yourself against potential opponents. Now this is a basic form that we learn for balancing, coordination, and interacting with each other. People out and people tend to have. Incredible. You guys want to see more? Okay. We're going to finish up soon right here. We're going to do a little one more. And they each have their own qualities. 
each animal in the Chinese calendar also has some attributes. Now, Alan, well, what do we do over Chinese New Year? We can tell these guys, you know, for Christmas, right? For Christmas, you know, you open a bunch of presents, you know, and you open them on Christmas Day. For, for regular New Year, for Western New Year, we do a countdown, we go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, Happy New Year! It's Monday, and then, and then it's over, that, that, that's it. Chinese New Year, Alan, how long does Chinese New Year last? It lasts in a, how long, what? Two weeks. That's two. So for like two weeks, are we just like partying and going crazy and doing gun style? <laughs> but what are we doing for two weeks now? No, no, no. During, during special holidays, there are always customs, right? Uh, cultural customs. And in the Chinese culture, there's a day for eating with your family. There's a day for cleaning. There's a day for visiting uh, your parents. There's, you know, but the most important thing is usually spending time with family and eating. But there's a very, very special way that we uh, celebrate over the Chinese New Year, and it's just a very special dance, Alan. Very special dance. It bring, it brings some that kind of style. No, 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 no. It brings good luck. Represents good fortune. Anybody know what that dance is? That's right. Line dancing like this. No, 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 not lion dancing, lion, lion, lion dancing. That's right, rawr, the lion dancing. But, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm no, like, zoologist or animal expert or anything, but I'm pretty sure lions didn't come from China, Alan. I, I, lions come from where? Africa, everyone's seen the Lion King here. We all know that, so Alan, why, 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 why do we have a Chinese lion dance? Do we do like a Chinese like rice dance? Or like a, a Chinese panda dance? You know, something Chinese? Well, there's a very interesting story about the lion dance. Okay, it goes a little something like this. It's all about culture. Because many, many years ago, someone from maybe Africa brought a real lion into China. Whether it's a pet or, you know, for trading it or I just want to show off, oh, I got a lion. But they brought a real lion into China. Now, imagine you never saw a lion before. What, what, what do you think? Were you scared? So, so who do you think they would call to help them with this lion situation? Ghostbusters! No, no, no. Animal control. Was there animal control? Was there 911 telephones back then? No. So, they called on the warriors of the village, right? The protectors of the village. And what do you think they did? And, and they do what you do. And they beat up the land away and it does come through. Well, no, Alan, because we mentioned earlier people who practice wushu or the martial arts, they have a lot of discipline. Can you guys say discipline again? That's right. And rather than using violence or using their art form to hurt the lion, they use their mind. So in using that, they really thought out, okay, how can we solve this problem? And what they did was they gathered paper mache, some bamboo, they put fireworks, and as well they used a lot of loud music. And they made That's right. And they made a lion of their own. And they used this lion to scare away and to ward off the real lion. So that's why every holiday or Chinese New Year's in the Chinese culture, they bring back the lion dance to ward off all the bad luck, all the bad spirits, and to bring in good luck for the new year. And they also use this in special events, special places, weddings, birthdays, that's right, and that is why there's a Chinese lion dance. Okay, well, Alan, you know what? Um, we performed wushu, we told them about the lion and Chinese New Year's culture. You know, are we, are, I think we're done, right? <laughs> That's right. We didn't do a lion dance yet. Well, you know what? With every dance, what do you need? Music!
And you know what? I've heard that some of the students here at Alexander Sterling, they are great at music. They're very, very talented. So I think we can find a few of them to help us out, right? Can we get a, can a couple of helpers here to, to help us? Let's see. Let's bring up five volunteers. How about that?